Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I have a very big update for you guys. Hester Peirce, commissioner at the SEC, released a video today on her newly minted YouTube channel talking about working with Gary Gensler on crypto regulations. This is big. I'm going to break it down for you guys. I'll play the clip for you, and we're going to talk about the implications as it relates to the Ripple lawsuit. In addition, could Bitcoin hit $90,000 or higher by the end of April? Could it close April at $92,000? You know, We're going to look at the stock-to-flow model and see if that's possible. Now, before I go into it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, friendly reminder, I have a free weekly newsletter, emphasis on free, all crypto insights and knowledge. Please sign up, link in the description, it helps support my channel. Um, in addition, I interviewed uh, Stefan Thomas yesterday and that interview will be live on Monday, so you don't want to miss it. We talk about XRP, Interledger, Ripple, Coil, crypto regulations, his Bitcoin that's been uh, inaccessible, right? All these things, We're, we break it all down. So that's going to be live on Monday. And on Monday, I am interviewing Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse. You don't want to miss this because, because we're going to talk all things SEC, this lawsuit, the future of XRP, and many more. Uh, so guys, the market still in its cooldown period. Once again, we had that ramp up, that hype, that pump around the Coinbase IPO. We're having our pullback and cooldown period. That's okay. We are still on track and we'll see how far the cooldown peri uh, period takes us, but we are still headed to new all-time highs. So you have to be patient. And here's an interesting article <clears throat> referencing the Bitcoin stock to flow model, which was created by Plan B. Bitcoin to close April above $90,000, when and where this bull wave will top. Stock to flow model creator Plan B has calculated Bitcoin could reach $92,000 by the end of April, but will it actually get there? Now, in my opinion, I don't think we're going to hit 90 by the end of April. I will gladly and happily be wrong about that, by the way, but I'm looking at probabilities. Is there a high probability of this happening? No. I think there's a higher probability of us hitting 70,000 or 75,000. I don't think 90. Now, could there be some huge bullish news that comes out and it's like, whoa, Apple just put Bitcoin on their balance sheet and that pumps it to 90,000? Of course. Um, is that very likely? I don't think so. Could, could we, you know, see that later this year? Maybe. You know, we get, once again, it's looking at the likelihood of things, the probability of things here, because there are no certainties. But one thing's for sure, guys, the data doesn't lie. When we look at the data and trends, everything is on track, according to the stock to flow model and the price increase. And Bitcoin, of course, crossed over a new to all time high of $64,000 this past week. And we're in our cool down period. But this, you got to look at it macro level. You can't look at it at the daily and weekly and hourly charts, right? Unless you're day trading. So macro level, we are on track. And something Plan B tweeted this morning, um, which I thought was interesting. He said, people uh, ask me where all the money needed for $1 trillion Bitcoin market value would come from. My answer, silver, gold, countries with negative interest rate, uh, Europe, Japan, US soon, countries with predatory governments, Venezuela, China, Iran, Turkey, etc. Billionaires and millionaires hedging against quantitative easing and institutional investors discovering the best performing assets of the last 10 years. So you have this serendipitous event here where all of these different factors are driving more money and value into Bitcoin and not just Bitcoin, but to the altcoins as well, right? Bitcoin is usually the entry way, the doorway to the entire market, and then it, that trickles down to the uh, altcoins. So very bullish uh, certainly new all-time highs, I think, are coming this year. When you have things like company, you know, uh, crypto companies going public like Coinbase, that is also another factor. It just brings more awareness and validity to the crypto asset class. Now, guys, Hester Peirce, who I've interviewed on my channel. If you haven't seen that interview, you have to check it out. Here's the interview I did a month ago with her. I'll put a link in the description. She's, of course, known as Crypto Mom. She's one of the most forward-thinking regulators we have in U.S. government. She gets the technology. She gets what's happening here. And, uh, you know, in my interview with her, she clearly said that she's been trying to influence the other commissioners to think a different way about this because they're thinking very differently. 
and it's sometimes she feels she's speaking to herself <laughs> and, and it is not getting through. Now, the SEC, as we covered in yesterday's video, has been exposed a bit here by uh, trying to go against some federal processing rules and so forth to get as much dirt as they can and to hinder Ripple's growth as a company as much as possible by going after their foreign business partners and requesting all kinds of information. So they got exposed. We covered that yesterday. And I think this is probably part of her way of, of trying to give assurance to people that, okay, Gary Gensler came in this past week, he got confirmed, and they're gonna try to clean this up. Now, let me play the clip for you. You guys can go watch the entire video. Um, she has a YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe. So I'll play it here for you. Another area I hope to work with Chairman Gensler on is building a regulatory framework for crypto. And that's something that Gary comes um, to the SEC with a lot of experience in. He's actually been teaching a course on blockchain and finance at MIT. He also has a lot of experience in regulation. Uh, chairman Gensler was, was previously the chairman of our fellow regulatory agency in the capital markets area, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. So with that combination of, of knowledge about regulation in the capital market space and knowledge of crypto, we should be able to build a good regulatory framework for crypto. It has been a big week for crypto also. Um, we saw the direct listing of a large crypto exchange, and that's opened up mainstream and main street interest in, in crypto. And so I think we'll see a continued interest from folks in, in crypto. I also introduced a safe harbor for token distribution events. The idea is to allow a, in a, a team that's building a network, a token, uh, a crypto network, a blockchain network, to have a token distribution event without worrying about how the securities laws will apply to what they're doing. And so specifically, they have a three-year runway in which to build out the network. And during that three years, they'll be required to make a number of disclosures so that the purchasers of those tokens know what they're getting and they know about the team that's building the network. Um, and those disclosures will be subject to the anti-fraud requirements under the securities laws. But um, at the end of three years, they can either show that they're a decentralized network um, or that the tokens are functional on the network or at the end, they'll have to register those tokens as securities. Uh, I put that safe harbor up on github and i've gotten some great feedback already i'm looking forward to more so do i do welcome your feedback on that it's also been a big week for esg investment. so multiple things there guys she talks about she's looking forward to working with the new chairman gary gensler who got confirmed this past week in working on a crypto regulatory framework and then she references her safe harbor which we've talked about on this channel for years and she talked about it in the interview that I did with her, where it gives these crypto companies a sandbox period where they're not going to be uh, flagged. Kind of like how Ripple, I would say back in 2013 to 2015, this would have been ideal for them. So they're not going to be in, in violation of securities laws because they're still trying to build out the network and get things going. So... Um, I'm hoping Gary can take that safe harbor and he can apply it across the, the crypto market and also maybe retroactively. Look, the SEC was nowhere to be found back in when Ripple was doing their thing and they could retroactively give them a pass here or, or do a quick fine and settlement, right? And and uh, XRP and, and Ripple will be in the clear to move forward to do uh, business and grow and do what they need to do. But right now, obviously, there's a big holdup. And I think um, the way Jay Clayton handled things obviously was very shady. There's so many things coming out now with, with William Hinman as well. And now they're where these folks are going to work with, you know, Ethereum investing uh, investors and so forth a lot of shady stuff happening here so i think gary's gonna have to come in and clean house a bit save some face and let's see what he does because it is not looking good the information that's being said to sent to the judge who's overseeing the ripple lawsuit um the, the judge has already pushed back on a lot of overreach and things that uh, the sec is trying to do so 
Uh, we'll see what her response is about the letter that was just submitted about the SEC's overreach and violating the, the kind of the federal rules around you know this hearing. So big, big update here, my friends. This is this is a groundbreaking moment, not just for Ripple and XRP, but for the entire crypto market. As she stated, crypto regulations. We're not talking about one specific token yet here. The reason why we emphasize Ripple and XRP is because they're currently being sued. But this has implications for Cardano, and we've seen Charles Hoskinson talk about it, right? Um, even Chainlink and, and whatever else, everything else in this market, maybe with the exception of Dogecoin <laughs> um, and obviously Bitcoin. So we shall see how what happens. I'm hoping Gary can come in, and this is a top priority, especially with the bad PR they're going to get from the, the different factors being exposed here by Ripple and their lawyers, right? So... We shall see, guys, but uh, let me know what you think. You know, could we see something very soon? I'm hoping, you know, maybe by the end of April. And uh, I'll talk to Brad Garlinghouse on Monday and ask him what he thinks and what you're hearing. And could there be something on the horizon here? Has he talked to Gary Gensler yet? And, and, and so on and so forth, right? So we'll break it down, guys. Once again, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell so when these interviews go live, you are notified and you don't miss out. And uh, don't forget to sign up for my free weekly newsletter. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for your support, and I'll talk to you all later.